Dun dun dun! Our Mt. Gox about to dump $9 billion worth of Bitcoin on us, causing the cryptocurrency markets to plummet into a deep, dark abyss. That is what many of the headlines out there may have you believe, but I can assure you that that is probably far from the reality of the situation that has currently arisen. And that's where we're going to be starting this daily market update off, ladies and gentlemen. I've been encountering Mt. Gox throughout my entire career in the cryptocurrency space, and we're going to be breaking it all down, including going to a video that I made when Bitcoin was 18,000 before we had the kind of bull market that we saw uh, in 2021. And the same kind of FUD and fear was about. Um, and I essentially just said, look, don't worry, don't panic. This is largely not going to affect things. It's a, There's a lot more kind of um, nuance to the situation. It's not just a case of, well, they've moved $9 billion worth of Bitcoin, so they're going to dump on the market. We'll break it all down. We're going to be starting the video off there. We're going to be looking at some comments recently made from Fed Kaskari, Fed's Kaskari, so Federal Reserve Board Member Kaskari in regards to rates. Remember, we had news yesterday, really good news, actually, that Europe were potentially going to lower rates next month. And the Fed will follow. And again, this is why Stan Druckenmiller has moved from, to bring that analogy up again, large cap, mag seven, more stable, you know, more kind of does better in a not so certain environment, a small cap, a lot more risky IWM, which is the Russell 2000 stocks, because he thinks the environment is going to be one that, you know, smaller stocks are going to outperform. Uh, and of course, they're interest rate sensitive, which means he's kind of forward guiding that. <coughs> We'll be breaking all that down. I do apologize, guys. We'll also be looking at the two-year yields. That's our real barometer for when rates come down. Talking about GameStop, talking about Dogecoin, uh, and talking about does that does what we're seeing for GameStop and Dogecoin and meme coins generally signal, signal the end for Bitcoin dominance. Again, this could kind of tie in with Stan Druckermiller and his move from bigger caps to smaller caps because the environment is one where things are gonna there's more certainty. You know, there's gonna be more risk taking. There's gonna be more hunt for yield. We're going to be breaking that all down. We've got a lot to get into as always. And let's just start things off with the headlines this morning. Mt. Gox transfer $9 billion worth of Bitcoin to a single address as part of the repayment plan. Now, I hope every single individual that got caught up in Mt. Gox, uh, Stella Lumens founder, Jeb McCaleb, I think it was he, he was one of the people that facilitated Mt. Gox, not the hacking of it, but the kind of creation of it. Uh, it was a useful tool up until basically somebody hacked it. They had really, you know, it was basically on a computer, everything. Um, they had really sort of not great security around the whole thing. It's a bit, bit of the cryptocurrency market's history. You know, I've been around long enough to kind of uh, been a part of it. Certainly not Mt. Gox, but seen it all unfold and, and, and hear some of the horrible stories that came out of it. Um, but they have recouped a lot of that Bitcoin and they are planning on repaying their individuals that got hacked. Now, Obviously, $9 billion worth of Bitcoin comes back. They're going to be giving that back to creditors. The question is, are they going to dump on the market? And I think probably, in my opinion, the vast majority of people actually wouldn't. Uh, just to show you that this is news that's been around for a long time. This is a video I made three, nearly four years ago now. And you can see I only got 14 measly likes on it. Um, but thank you, by the way, to each and every one of you that were part of those 14 likes all the way back then. And you can see Bitcoin was at 18,000 four hundred dollars and we hadn't really started the bull market yet uh, and this is when we were very much in a similar position to where we are today we're saying look great things are coming guys great things are coming don't let news disrupt you and, and news is really just there as a headline um i think they are going to repay people i don't think it's as big a sell event as people think i think a lot of people will hang on to it certainly if they're believers in bitcoin uh, undoubtedly some people will sell um but i think that sell pressure will get if it might be like a kind of grayscale genesis situation with the ETF when it got facilitated, people started to take profits, but it will be short lived. So there might be a sell pressure on the back end of it. Obviously, Bitcoin selling off today, probably on the back end of this news, but I don't think it needs to. We are in a broader uptrend. You do have pullbacks along the way. There's always going to be news attached to it. Just focus on the big task and plan at hand. Uh, and you can see these are some of these sort of well addresses that are moving some of the Bitcoin, and it's a large amount of Bitcoin, you know, 16,589 Bitcoin. That is a lot of money. Uh, that's more money than I have. Um, that's for sure, by the way, um, by orders of magnitude and probably most people, it, you know, out there. So this is a lot of money that's being sort of moved around. They say it's to an unknown wallet address. What they mean there is not that they don't know where it's being sent to because they undoubtedly do, more that it's just a wallet that, you know, they're not familiar with uh, the kind of on-chain um 
what would be the right word for them? Gatekeepers is not. Um, but I don't think you need to worry about this at all. Um, I think it's a good thing that people get paid back. Might it cause a little bit of sell pressure? It may. We don't know exactly when people are going to be paid out. But I think ultimately, you know, just don't, if you're panicking about this news, you're really not understanding the context of the market that we're in, which is what these daily market updates are all about. Trying to get everybody to sort of see the bigger picture, to see how we have formulated that picture, not just on the cryptocurrency market, but looking at the entire macro environment and saying, look, crypto is going to be the fastest horse in this race. It's going to be the fastest person or the furthest person away from the building when it explodes. Um, so let's move on from that just to sort of quieten things now, because I had a lot of people asking me, what do you think about this? I've been dealing with this my whole career, like that video I just showed you that I did four years ago. And you can see, just like we're saying today, crypto did very well on the back end of it. And I mean, look at this top three. Here's a bit of nostalgia for, for us. XRP, Ethereum, Litecoin, obviously Chainlink still uh, hovering about. Chainlink doing quite well recently. And there was a, a number of others. I'm not sure if I show any of the others. Uh, and I think I was still using uh, linear charts back then, not logarithmic ones. Um, come a long way. Let's talk a little bit about the macro environment as we spoke about it yesterday on the back end of ECB signaling rate cuts potentially in June. And Fedge Kashkari, infamous Kashkari, somebody who was fundamental in the 2008 uh, financial crisis, by the way, proved a lot of things. He's also been involved in lots of other things, but we won't uh, digress into all of that. Fedge Kaskari wants to see many more months of positive inflation data before a rate cut. Um, think that that's not a bad comment or an unfair one uh, because if we look at inflation and we've been directly opposed and again everyone's sort of coming around now to we're not seeing that 1970s style second wave of inflation like you ding dongs keep saying because we're not seeing it it's that simple when we start to see it then we go okay it's here we don't you know you can say oh, it might happen um and I'm going to do a video. I'm actually traveling over the next couple of days, but I'll, I'll make sure I keep getting videos out for you guys where it's just me and the camera talking about should you not be buying assets in fear of, you know, World War Three or whatever people think is coming um, because it's a very interesting topic and it keeps a lot of people out of the market. But you're kind of, the only thing I can anchor myself on is technically how markets look. I can't predict geopolitical events and things like this. I know a shitstorm is coming. There's no doubt in my mind about that. About that. It's going to be a reset style one. Um, but do you sort of panic? Are you a deer in the headlights to that? Or do you try and arbitrage and, and make your life as comfortable as possible for whenever that may or may not kick off, you know? Um, but for an entirely other video, but let's focus on what we're talking about here. I do uh, digress and I always apologize for digressing, but I know some of you enjoy the sort of side comments. So also forgetting Mt. Gox, you've got the Fed basically coming out and saying they might not you know, lower rates for a little bit. They need to see many more months. So that's kind of putting expectations back in a box a little bit. That probably has more to do with why Bitcoin is down slightly today than anything. Um, but the Fed, in my opinion, will ultimately lower interest rates. And when we look at the two-year yield, uh, let's start it on a broader time frame. I think this is done. I really do think this is done in the same way that this one was done. And I think you're going to see further downside to this. And you can see actually what we saw, if we look at a daily candle, this is going to be leaning on um, risk a little bit. But I do think this is broken down. I do think rates are coming down. I think that's why Drucker Miller moved from a large cap to a smaller cap. Uh, and we'll talk about small caps in just a second. Also, if we look at the two year, it, the um, bond market, I'm actually bullish on bonds, which is insane because of how much they're issuing. And I think that I'm bullish on that because I think it aligns with global liquidity and what I think is going to happen, which is the Fed stepping in. So don't panic about the Mt. Gox thing. I think this has got more to do with probably any, everything than anything. Let's talk about GameStop. Now, we've spoken about Roaring Kitty and the uh, agent-esque nature of his resurgence just in time for everybody to have bought just quickly beforehand. Um, but GameStop shares rise 25% in pre-market trading after a $933 million stock sale. Wow, I didn't even know about this. What is the environment suggested because people people that don't understand the context of markets they'll say this they'll say oh okay meme stocks are hurt the, the market's definitely over you know this is late stage well no if you understood when GameStop and we'll show you it all by the way uh rallied initially it also coincided with dogecoin which ex which kind of we're looking at environment here we've, we're also talking about stan drucker miller moving from large to, to small caps and the environment that that sort of um, signals to us, a bullish one uh, for everything broadly and the uncertainty kind of uh, 
you know, dying down a little bit. And I think we'll get that when we start seeing cuts and, and, and this is going to be good for markets. Um, but the GameStop in the blue, we've got Dogecoin and we've got Bitcoin dominance. And just like Stan moving from NVIDIA, which we're using as a Bitcoin analogy here, into smallers, it's the risk appetite and the environment that's changing. Um, and GameStop actually, uh, if I now go over to a Bitcoin chart, GameStop starting to rally, you'd have had the same ding dong saying, oh, it's over, the bull market's done because GameStop and memes are rallying. No, actually this signals the kind of risk appetite environment that we're going into. So we're very weirdly putting GameStop, Dogecoin in Bitcoin Orange and Bitcoin Dominance to say, look, this is, this is a, a bullish environment that we think is really going to support altcoins. And I did an entirely uh, dedicated or partly dedicated video on Patreon to this topic entirely. And we're majority positioned in altcoins. And remember, we've got technical analysis on altcoins that really supports the whole theory on that we've sort of put together. Um, so you can see this is total two that we think is going to do well. So I think meme coins are going to do very well. GameStop's interesting. It kind of reaffirms Stan Druckenmiller, I guess, his decisions and our overall opinion on the markets. Don't worry about Mt. Gox. I've been here for a, a very long time. My introduction, and it's why we mentioned Ross uh, Ulbricht yesterday in regards to Trump's pledge to get him out of jail after serving 11 years. Uh, there's a lot of people that think he should be in there because obviously his site undoubtedly did facilitate harm in some way, shape or form. Um, I think there's a lot of nuance to that entire argument, but actually I've been really looking at the space since 2012, which is when he obviously created the website that he created. I was never a partaker in it. It's not my bag. It's not my game. I don't enjoy that kind of stuff, not that I have anything to do with uh, against anybody who does. I think I'm a huge libertarian, so I think each to their own. You want to do what you want to do, crack on, just don't harm anybody. And maybe he did cross those marks at some point. But we've got a great environment ahead of us. Mt. Gox, I don't think is anything to worry about. They are going to get repaid eventually. Yes, okay, that might cause a little bit of sell pressure, but it'll be short-lived. And ultimately, it's a good thing. I think overall that people get their lost Bitcoin back. I think probably more so the market's selling off because of what the Fed had to say yesterday and that readjustment in rates. I wonder if the dollar's seeing any strength on the back end of this. Not really. Dollar's really getting hit. And let's just talk about the dollar because we've got that broader thesis. You know, I'm just waiting for this to break. And we ultimately think the dollar's on the down, coming to the downside here, which is supportive of rates and where we're on. And, and that's going to be an environment that sees risk do well. Every, every which way we look at things, every, every way we try and stack the puzzle, it all equates to the same equation. Um, so that is it from me, ladies and gentlemen. I absolutely love doing these updates. I love interacting with you guys. We are going to uh, be going and starting doing things live so that you can actually ask me questions. We can take caller questions. You know, we can cover a, a, a broader variety of topics. We can spend an hour or so covering everything. Um, and yeah, really looking forward to launching all that. And that's part of me going away on a business trip to, to, to sort of help facilitate all that and really get all in crypto to where I believe you guys deserve it to be. That's it from me, ladies and gents. Thanks a lot for watching. I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. See you soon.